What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fire Builders Live. My name, like always, is Josh Corporal, and I am streaming live from Key West from the porch. Guess who I have on the line today? Jamina de la Serna. Jamina, it is so good to have you. Welcome to the show. Josh, thank you so much for having me in the show. I'm so happy to be here with you with so, so many hours difference because it's super early in the morning for you. You even have the roosters like there at the background. And for me, it's dinner time. I am at the Red Sea right now, Urgada in Egypt. And it's like, yeah, super late. So this is so cool. So cool that we're able to do this. And by the way, like it doesn't even have to be early here. The roosters have no respect for time. They just crow at all hours of the day and night. It's ridiculous. Typical. Uh, typical, <laughs> typical, typical rooster. Uh, so this is going to be so good. We are going to be talking today all about women, what they can do to heal themselves from the inside out, even as they're trying to become like boss babes, trying to be as assertive as possible in the world. But before we get into that, uh, let me explain to everybody watching and listening what we're doing here on Fire Builders Live. We bring on guests six days a week. We bring these amazing people on like Khamina and we take these these big ideas, these big dream speeds, these big goals, and we break them down into small steps, something tactical and actionable that you can do every single day to progress. Because like we all know, to really get somewhere, it takes that consistency. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And get get this, right? So, I mean, uh, it's just so impressive. Running through the stuff that you have done in your life, it is amazing. Running the number one Spanish-speaking keto YouTube channel with subscribers totaling almost half a million. You really do understand the demands on the female body. You are a digital entrepreneur, a bodybuilder, a biohacker, a YouTuber, a journalist, motivational speaker. Seriously, you run the gamut of stuff. You are honestly one of the most energetic people that I know. Our conversation, like for those of you that you don't know, before we do these lives, we have a conversation and Hamina just blew me away at the kinds of stuff that she was talking about. Uh, I mean, you, and you, you, you've come up, I mean, from the ground up, like these are personal things for you. You had PCOS, you know, when you were 13, you battled that for two decades and now you have overcome that. You help women heal from the inside out, heal their hormones because just because you want to achieve, you know, quote unquote, boss babe status and be a real badass in real life, you don't want to throw your hormones out of whack. You want to thrive. You want to flourish as the beautiful woman that you are. And so that is why I'm super excited to have you on the show. Hamina, again, so good to have you. Welcome to Fire Builders Live. Just you make me look so good that I might actually hire you as my PR. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well-deserved. It's well-deserved. Seriously, like the things that you were doing are incredible. And you touched on this a little bit, but tell everybody where the hell you are exactly right now. Well, right now I am, as I say, in Urgada, which is the area, is, is uh, Soma Bay in the area of the Red Sea in Egypt. Um, we came here, so I'm a, I'm a digital nomad. And I, although I moved to London 13 years ago, um, I keep being a digital nomad where I can work from anywhere in the world as long as I've got my phone and internet connection and my computer. So yeah, basically I can be anywhere in the world. And right now I am at the Red Sea, getting some color because I was looking very pale. And one of the things that you just mentioned that I think like for us, because we've been speaking about this, maybe it makes sense, but I think many women are gonna be listening to you and going like, why would my hormones go crazy when I'm trying to be like an entrepreneur? How is that connected? Because to you and to me, it makes sense uh, because we've been talking about it, but maybe women are going like, what? And yeah, then, yeah, explain it. Right, because the number one thing, like I've been helping women in business since 2012. And my first thing always started with female health, because as you said, I suffered from PCOS since age 13, and I wasn't actually properly diagnosed until I was 27. And always I was treated with the normal treatment, which is they just give you hormones, they give you the pill, which by the way, can we touch on the theme of the pill? And we will, because that's something that we need to talk about. I know you love the pill. Oh, you... best, best, <laughs> best invention ever not <laughs> <laughs> and um they give you a lot of hormones they completely kind of like destroy your health and your well-being and then on top of that when you try to build your own career your own entrepreneurship 
and everything. Many women don't know this, or most women don't know this. I was surprised myself when I discovered it. But by trying to be too aggressive in the real world, in your day-to-day -day world, your business, your family, put it this way, trying to be too much in your yang energy, meaning your male energy, can actually be a trigger for things like polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, which is a um, syndrome where basically, women don't know this, but basically what happens is you don't ovulate. And because you don't ovulate, you start, it's like a vicious circle in where you don't ovulate, you start producing more testosterone in your ovaries, free testosterone, unbound testosterone, which in, in return, don't allow you to ovulate. So again, you produce more testosterone. Don't allow, so it's like a vicious circle. It just gets worse and worse exactly. and worse and worse. And is it is it because is it because the demands on a woman are the same, right? Where um, where there's a lot of stress, high pressure, like the 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 expectation to show up every single day, to be energetic, to be like always on point, to be very assertive. It's it's that. I mean, it almost it's crazy. Like it's almost. It's almost a mental thing, right? Like uh, a lot of the way that you think about this stuff has a massive effect on your physiology. Exactly. And let's also talk, me as a biohacker, I also became a nutritional therapist. So I'm, I'm into the, the world of biohacking and health. And when we are biohackers, we really go into like the functional stuff, why things happen to your body. Everything that we have is a symptom of something. Like obesity is not an illness, it's a symptom of something. Acne is not an illness, it's a symptom of something. Hair loss is not an illness, it's a symptom of something. So we're always trying to go deep in what's happening. And right now in the world, we have come to a point, I think this is going to change a little bit soon or it's starting to change, but we've come to a point, especially in the 90s, to all of us who are children of the 90s, I, we grew up in the 90s, it's we make it really big and really amazing to all the women and men who behave aggressively, who behave energetically, who behave like they are, they are extroverts, they are into the yang energy a lot. And when you're a biohacker, like one of the things, for example, we talk a lot about, um, about the brain connection and about neurotransmitters. So every person in the world has a dominance of one of the neurotransmitters. So the people who are very out there and they're like go-getters and they don't care about anything, that is usually a dopamine dominant, okay? So dopamine dominant makes you very aggressive, very like go-getter, very ex extrovert, but it also has very bad things, which is it can make you into an unsensitive person. It can make you into... You have to be very careful because you can become an asshole, basically. So Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And... I mean, when you say that, like uh, that aggressiveness, that that making all these like little micro goals and then hitting them over and over and the sense of control that you have possibly over yourself or your, you know, your loved ones or your employees or whatever, your coworkers, like those are all what you're talking about, like these little dopamine hits that make you feel good. And if it makes you feel good, why would you stop? You just keep going. Exactly. Uh, That's called chasing the, 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 the shiny toy. Yeah. Uh, chasing the shiny toy. And some people have the gift. I mean, it's never a gift or a curse. It's, you just have to balance all the neurotransmitters. You just have to be aware of what is your dominant one. So, for example, in my case, I am acetylcholine, acetylcholine dominant, which is, and my second is dopamine. So, acetylcholine dominant is the adventurous, is that people who are, oh, that's why I'm a digital nomad. Uh, and I have a feeling that, Josh, you might be there as well in the acetylcholine <laughs> dominant. A little bit, a little yeah. bit. We like adventure. We like new things. We like to meet new people. We like to talk. We are very extroverted, um, but we are not as um, aggressive as the dopamine dominant, which is like boom, 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 right? So then you have the people who are GABA dominant, which are like these people who are super calm, the people who never get angry about anything, kind of like the gurus of the world. And uh, for example, in my case, I'm a little bit deficient in GABA. So one of the things that I have to learn in my life is to become more 
like to try and bring more GABA into my life to calm down the other when things you, that can make you develop too much into the young energy and trigger things like PCOS. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there. Sure, sure. Well, uh, so when you say GABA, is that that is that a substance in the body or is that a type of what exactly is that? It's a neurotransmitter. Okay. So they are all neurotransmitters. So there, there are many of them, but kind of like the, the ones that we know the most or that you might have heard about is dopamine, uh, acetylcholine, GABA, for example. It's like those three are quite like, yeah, we, we recognize them. And you are born with a dominance. And also through the things that you live in your life and through the toxins that you put in your body and through so many things, you become do dominant in one of them. And it's not bad or good, but you always have to be more aware of which one you're dominant and which one you need. And there are tests online and everything, like proper tests that you can do to find out. And is it is it so interesting question, right? Like, is it because if you're dominant in one versus another, as far as the neurotransmitter goes, is it because you're producing more of it or you're just more receptive to it? Good question. So you could be producing more of it. You can you can have more receptors about it, more more receptors of it. So you're trying to get more. In the case of dopamine, it's not so much that we produce a lot of dopamine. It's a case of we want more dopamine, one one more and more and more because it's more receptors. It's like we always want more. It's like chasing the shiny toy. Um. So yeah, you are more receptive to one of the to one of the the um, neurotransmitters and one thing is the one thing that happens is that the dopamine is the yang or what the chinese call the yang which is the masculine energy and the gaba will be the feminine or yin which is the calm down cooling energy feminine energy so if you see nowadays we're talking about neurotransmitters gaba dopamine back in like 2,000, 3,000 years ago, the Chinese were already aware of these things. They just call it yin and yang. And if you read amazing books like The Path of the Empress, which is an amazing book that I recommend to every woman who feels identified with this, you can see the whole thing, how the Chinese um, discover all of this and how they, with this, with the resources that they had back then, um, they call it the, the yin energy, the cooling energy. Then the, the energy can be dampened or can be damp or can be heated or it needs to be. It's quite fascinating. The Path of the Empress is a very good book to start looking at how this has been assessed since the beginning of humanity. Okay, The Path of the Empress. I'll make sure to include that in yes. the description too because I just had a question about it, uh, but you just answered it. So yes. perfect. Good. Uh, yeah. Well, so, okay, so as you, so as you're trying to understand, it's important to understand which neurotransmitter you're dominant with, because mm -hmm. does that mean that you want to quell that? Like you want to, you know, just be cognizant of that? Or do you want to then try and raise up the other energies to meet it? Exactly. So um, if you are very dopamine dominant, that's the yang energy. Um, if we go back to Chinese medicine, which I'm not an expert of in any scope of the imagination, but for the for what I know, I'm trying to explain the things, is that um, they already said that when you have too much yang energy in Chinese medicine or even in acupuncture, like if you go to, like for example, many women lose their periods because of PCOS. And when they go to, and this is very typical of women, again, PCOS is very typical of women who are high achievers. Uh, they always have problems with their fertility, always. Because fertility is yin. And if your body feels that you are known to your yin energy, into your nurturing, and when I talk about nurturing, some women may go like, oh, that sounds a little bit like soppy, you know? Like, do I have to become the mother earth to be like, no, you don't. And, I don't consider myself to be that kind of like mother earth person. And still I was able to heal and still I'm now coming to the world and having a six figure business with a more nurturing side of myself and having a fertility that I didn't have in my twenties, for example. And now it's completely natural, no drugs, no nothing, no, no medication, no nothing. So you always want to be aware if you go to an acupuncturist and you don't have your period, the, the first thing that the acupuncturist is going to try to do is unblock the yin path. 
because they are going to notice and they're going to ask you questions about heat. They're going to ask you, are you too hot? Are you high in temperature? Are you a nervous person? Do you have like a red tongue? They're going to look into your tongue and look for signs of heat. They call it heat. Heat, masculine. Cool, feminine. So they're going to look for signs of heat in your body and they're going to try to calm the heat and bring up the cool. Um, again, if you are a person who is very GABA dominant, and this could be in men and women, uh, then you might want, like, they will look for signs of coolness or cold in your body, and they want to bring the heat into your body. Um, so, yeah, you're always trying to, again, yin and yang. Remember the yin and yang? is like Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Like, tr just trying to find that balance so that they're, so that not one is dominating the other, but there's a really good, there's a mix of both. And, uh, um, and I just want to say, so, like, uh, Brian says, hi, Josh, hi, Jimena. All right. Sterling's hi, on, too. <laughs> and guys, if you have if you have any questions about this seriously, um, I implore you. Now is a fantastic time to talk to Humane about this. Ask any question that you want. Uh, seriously, this is such a cool opportunity to do that. Uh, so, okay. So, as as you are suggesting that women try and balance this type of energy, right? And and perhaps that they do. They have a lot of heat, right? There is there is a lot of yang energy. It's, it's not that they're deficient in yin, it's just that they're blocking it in some ways. Are there, are there ways that you know in your experience to unblock that, to help with the unblocking process? Yes, so this also happens, I, I wanna address this because this also happens with women who, for example, single mothers. If you have been put in a position in your life, you might be like, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not particularly like a like a do dopamine dominant person. You might think I'm not, but uh, sometimes in situations in your life, you are put in a situation where you have to be the man and the woman in your life. So this happens a lot to single mothers who have to raise their children alone, and they don't have a partner to help them, and so they end up behaving both like a mother and a father at the same time. And then they end up having problems with PCOS. And by the way, PCOS uh, gives you, because usually women come to me not knowing they have PCOS. When my patients come to me, they will come to me because they've got adult acne, especially in this area. That's a sign of heat called by the, by the Chinese medicine. A sign of heat is a sign of high testosterone or unbound testosterone they will come to me with what is called male pattern hair loss which is women losing the, the frontal part of their hair uh, quite remarkably alopecia in the frontal part of their hair which is the way that men lose their hair as opposed to other kinds of alopecia which is like alopecia areata where you can like lose chunks of your hair somewhere or alopecia universalis where you lose all your hair they will come to me with obesity, especially on the middle area. They can't get rid of fat around the middle area, and it's always there. Uh, insulin resistance is the number one as well, that type 2 diabetes. Uh, so all of the um, facial hair or body hair, and by the way, all women have hair in their bodies. We all have that peach fuzz. That's normal. We have hair in our, in our arms. That's normal. I'm talking about more like a male kind of hair which is like your beard, like, like, like darker hair on your face or your body, your chest, uh, your belly. You won't have all the symptoms, but you might have a lot of these symptoms. So when, uh, when they have these kind of symptoms, then you can know that, uh, that the person is going through an ovulation, meaning they're not ovulating, meaning that's a situation of polycystic ovarian syndrome, which by the way is a wrong name because Polycystic ovarian syndrome doesn't mean that you've got cysts in your ovaries. It's nothing to do with that. It's to do with no ovulating. In fact, the medical community is thinking about changing the name. But anyway, once you are into this situation, which can be triggered by many reasons, and if one of the reasons is that you are too much in your young energy, then you can start working towards, like there are many methods to start working into bringing a more female side of your, of your, of your personality. And for example, in the case of like, women who say, yeah, okay, uh, I have to be the man in my house because I'm a single mother uh, and, I can, and I have to be the single mother 24-7. There is no other way because to other women, I will, I will say, make sure that you have a partner who is supporting you, for example, having a partner, and this could be in a heterosexual or homosexual relationships, but having a partner 
that is taking the yang energy when you get home. So you can be like at your work, you can be like super like yang energy, but make sure that when you get home, you can get rid of that kind of like coat and someone else is taking the yang energy. Uh, but for single mothers, for example, they have to do it all the time. So for in that case, you will go into activities that they can do that will bring more femininity or more feminine energy uh, to, their, to, to their system, to their bodies. So spending more time with other women and doing things that they enjoyed doing when they were little. And those things are usually dancing, painting, uh, singing. Those kind of things can bring. That is the creativity. That is the yin side. So there are many things that they can do if this is the case. And not all PCOS is because of your young energy. But what I'm saying is that it's very unknown that female who are very high achievers and have a very strong young energy have problems with fertility and have problems with ovulation and have all these symptoms that I told you and they don't know why. And this could be one of the reasons. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm glad that you touched on a couple of those things like the creativity side, the painting, the dancing, like singing, because one of the things that I love to ask on this show for every guest is if you could suggest that they do one thing. Now, I realize that there's probably a ton that they could do um, for themselves and not one thing is going to work for everybody. But in your case, in your experience, what what is it best for you? Like what makes you feel like you get into that yin so much better than any of the others okay i'll tell you one thing and we're gonna go to my favorite topic <laughs> <laughs> and it's something that probably 99 percent of women are doing and what i'm gonna say it's controversial um it's complicated and if it kind of like um triggers you when i say this I commend you to please go and find out why I'm saying this and how does this work because it is not the solution to anything. The one thing that people or that females could do to stop being in the young energy and to stop messing their hormones and to stop feeling like crap is to stop the pill and any hormonal uh, contraception that they're taking. And most women take this. I don't mind if it's a pill. I don't mind if it's a patch. I don't mind if it's an insert in your arm. I don't mind if it's uh, amirina, which is something that you have in your uterus that is like releasing hormones every month. I don't mind what it is. Anything that is not allowing you to ovulate, which is what uh, the pill does. And when I said the pill, I talk about all of these things together, yep. is actually preventing you from being healthy. And it's literally impossible to be healthy if you are not ovulating because you're taking drugs to not ovulate and i know this triggers a lot of women because they're gonna say what are you saying you're saying that then i have to have all the children in the world that god sends me no sister that's not it and i am 36 i don't have children and i don't take the pill and i have a partner so there are many other ways we can talk about that if you want it's called a family planning method which is scientific but i mean the one thing that they can do is stop the pill and work towards recovering their hormones after stopping the pill. Because also when they stop the pill, they're gonna go through a lot of problems. Well, is that an easy thing? Is that an easy thing to do? Is it something that you can just stop completely and um, and uh, and things return back to normal fairly quickly? Mm -hmm. Or you just, I mean, it just takes time essentially to I heal. Wish. Some women become fertile quite quickly after taking the pill, but most don't. And even if you become fertile very quickly after you stop the pill, I would say it's not a good idea to have a child before you get the chance to recover hormonally and to get rid of the chemicals that you've been putting in your body, because then those chemicals and all of that is going to go into your baby. Um, so no, it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, it's easy. It's as easy as stop taking it. That's, that's it. That's, that's yeah, as right. As don't take it. That's it. Um, but then you have to work with your body, with your hormones, and you have to be ready for what's coming because usually it's not pleasant. I don't, I mean, what can you expect? You've been, you've been stopping a biological uh process in your body for whatever years could be one could be two could be 20 
Um, so it just takes longer essentially to recover from something like that. It seems like the longer that it takes to onset, like the longer it would take to reset. And, exactly. uh, well, and that's, then, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you the, like, as, as if they're not on the pill right now, if they're not taking the pill at all, um, and they still feel like they're just hustling all the time, just like you were saying, lots of yang energy. Is there something that they can do? Um, or maybe just in your experience, like, is there something that they can do that's more effective than anything else that you've seen? Yes. Uh, as I said, the, the main thing is to, if you can, um, that if you partnership, have the chance, yeah, that partnership with your partner, with the, with the male side of your partnership that they take on the male side when you're at home, when you're not hustling. Um, and if you are um, someone who cannot switch off because maybe you are a single mother, uh, then it's going into the, try to think, try to journal and remember what were the things that you really enjoyed when you were a kid. Because yep. those were the things that you did not thinking. You were, those were the things that you did because you felt free and you didn't care about the world. And it's usually things like dancing or singing, as I said, you need to pick back to, you need to pick up those things again in your life because that's what brings you joy. And joy is yin energy. Anything that brings you joy, even as a man, when you are a man and you are feeling joyful doing something, that is your yin energy. That is the yin energy in a man as well. So do anything that brings you joy for the sake of joy for the sake of joy, not to try to get anywhere else. Yeah, um, exactly. Like those things that, uh, that you did back before you had all of these societal pressures and judgments and things like that, but you did them just for the pure experience and like the pure happiness of them all. Exactly. What was it for you? What do you do? For me, it's dancing. Dancing? <laughs> dancing salsa. <laughs> like that's the time yes. I lose myself. I lose myself. It could be hours and hours and hours. I completely lose track of time. I lose track of everything in the world. And it's, yeah, it's the one thing that I enjoy the most in my yin and puts me totally into a yin state. Well, <laughs> also as, because when you dance salsa, I don't know, do, do you dance salsa, Josh? I've done, I've done once or twice, once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> what happens in salsa is that the male is the one who leads. So he takes completely the yang energy and the female follows. So even if you don't want, even if you are a bay boss, and even if you are like hustling and you are the boss and telling everyone else what to do, in the dance floor, you don't tell anyone what to do, you follow. And that's what puts you into a female. Like, it's just about you showing how beautiful you are. It's nothing to do with, you don't have to do anything. You just. <laughs> I love it. No, that's, is it all the same too? Like, I don't know. Do you dance tango? Is tango the same way? Tango is the same. Tango yeah. is the same. Bachata is the same. Um, any, any dance that it, even vals, like any dance that you do between like traditionally between a man and a woman is always the man leading the, the woman following. So it will put you there. It's just about you looking pretty. In fact, when you dance salsa, the teachers at Salsa always tell the guys, if a woman doesn't look good dancing, it's your freaking fault. It's not her fault. <laughs> I love it's that. your freaking fault. Because your job is to make her look good. And it's true. Damn straight. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I had um, my friend Jim McCarthy was actually on the show last season, and he's the, uh, the Latin bachata champion in uh, Singapore, of all places. They are absolutely fanatical about bachata, and, he, and he rocks it. I yeah. need to meet him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a cool dude. Uh, well, okay, so so I'm curious, right? Like, if you could describe, I mean, if you start to do this, let's say it is dancing or singing or painting, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of changes will happen to you where you know it's starting to take effect? You're starting to pull in that yin energy a little bit more. How would you feel? Well, I tell you something, Josh, and I have this with my patients before. And obviously, when we're working, when I'm working with my patients, I'm working with more things than just like it's because it's never only just one thing. You have to do a holistic. That's why we are function. We are in the functional medicine. We are very used to allopathic allopathic medicine, which is take this pill. No, in into the functional medicine is something that it's where we ha I have to get to know you. I have to get to know your childhood. I have to get to know what triggers you, what fears you have, what makes you happy. So because it's 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 holistic. It's not just one thing. But I what happens and it can happen very quickly is that when they start 
doing these things and they start bringing more joy into their lives. Um, many women have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease um, of the thyroid. Um, and they start feeling how their medication, like the doctors have to lower their medication because their thyroids are working better. And that's a sign that when your thyroid can become sluggish or hypothyroidism, when your body thinks that you are in danger. The more joy you bring into your life, the more safe your body feels, the better your thyroid is gonna work. So then your hypothyroidism might go away. Um, another thing that I work with my females is allowing them and telling them to eat as much as they want. Not eat anything they want because we are not eating crap. This is very important. But honor your appetite is another thing because most women are not eating enough and they're not eating the right kind of foods. Most women go into like just eating salads or going, excuse me for this, but they go into veganism and vegetarianism and i'm sorry darling but you're gonna break your hormones with this and i know this is gonna trigger some people but we can talk about that in another occasion <laughs> we'll put your email and everything in there so they can contact you well here here's a here's an interesting question that this just came through so tell me what your thoughts are on this sterling asks if your partner is yin energy and you are yang do you have an easy suggestion for taking on or exchanging each other's energy? I'm guessing when it's a partner yin energy is because the partner is a male with yin energy and you are young as a woman. That might be it. Yeah. If that, that was it. Be, that might be it. Actually, there are many things they can do to exchange each other's energies. Um, I, there is a book. Oh my God. Can we put this in the notes of the show? Because there is a very, very good book that they can read and a very good podcast that they can listen to where, where the theme of this book is precisely this, is, uh, is couples of like guys who are very into the yin and females who are very into the yang, how they can work together to like balance each other's energies. And so that's a very, that I could tell you things now, but if you actually want to get into that, I'm going to send you the name of the book and the podcast and everything, and they will find all the answers there because it's exactly what they're looking for. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. definitely do that, and I'll include this yes. in the notes. Um, and, uh, and so, seriously, Jimena, it is such a cool experience talking with you because you have such a breadth of knowledge, and, and you've seen it all. You've, you've come through the, a lot of this yourself, so it's not like you're just taking a lot of this stuff and – and regurgitating it like no. this is all learned experience from both in yourself and yes. we're yeah and working with like with so many women so if people these women would like to continue this conversation if they'd like to get in touch with you now we have your instagram in the show notes so that's something that they can go check out but yes. what do you have going on these days and uh and yeah how can they best get in touch with you so I think the best way is Instagram. I mean, they can check also my YouTube channel, which they can find me as Jimena de la Serna or Functional Female Force on YouTube. And I talk a lot about this. But also on Instagram, I talk daily about all of these things. And also I share constantly stories where they can see how I apply. Like I live this 24-7. Like I don't just talk about this and then I go and like, like do whatever I want. Well, no. speaking of that, right? Like show everybody your water bottle that we were talking about. Like, um, I mean, it's like even my, even little things like this. All my all my all my garments and my things and my cool glasses. <laughs> and let's just go biohacker here. <laughs> well, that I mean, even that water. That's a special bottle and a special mineral in there that yes. pulls out a lot of the toxins. Yes, we were talking about this. So this is a this is a water bottle. It's it's glass, so we don't drink in plastic. By the way, females and males don't drink on plastic because plastic is estrogenic, and we don't want it in our lives. But anyway, uh, this is a glass bottle, and it's got um, a stone inside, which is a mineral called I think it's called Malfi stone which has been used in Chinese medicine since forever, attracts heavy metals in the water and releases things like magnesium, for example, into the water. So it's actually, it mineralizes your water, but it also captures, um, captures uh, heavy metals and other things, other impurities. To be honest with you, at home, we've got a proper 
os a reverse osmosis uh, device in the tap, which filters through many, many ways in like a proper, proper way. But when you're traveling, this is actually quite nice to like feel that you are drinking better water. <laughs> but so at have home, you, please have proper filters. <laughs> have you ever done a pH test on that water? I'm just super curious as to in, whether on this or not. One? Yeah. I have no idea about this one. This is this is new. This is the first time I'm traveling with this. So I haven't. But it's not only on the pH that you can see the difference in water. You can actually send the water to a lab and have it. This is the kind of things that biohackers do anyway. We, we, we actually <laughs> go to the extent of sending things that we use every day to labs to have them properly tested. So yep. that could be something to do to check if it works or not. Uh, that's done with the filter that we have at home it's completely tested like that as well. So, so you taste that you actually are drinking better water because the tap water is like, oh my God. Not good, not no good. good. Well, nicht, nicht good. <laughs> nicht good, like uh, ne, ne pravilno in a Ukrainian. <laughs> oh my God, come on, <laughs> uh, So I tell you, um, do you have anything, like do you, should they just watch your Instagram? Do you have any like programs or anything that you do yes, with women? Or have, do they come? I have my programs. I have consultations. Obviously, uh, my programs right now run only in Spanish. I'm considering like doing things in English as well. My programs. But anyway, in any case, in my consultations 101, they can be done in English or Spanish. Uh, hopefully in the future in German as well. It'll <laughs> happen. <I'm> <laughs> it's going to happen. And they have all the information if they go to my Instagram they have a link and in that link they will have a page where all the buttons to my consultations and everything i only open like right now my consultations are closed because i'm i'm traveling but as soon as i go back home then they will open and i always let them know because i only open very like three or four consultations a week which is all i can take so i can actually work on the cases and they go very quickly, they go immediately. So I always let them know when they're gonna open so people can be ready. But yeah, they can they can get consultations there and they can see my programs and everything else if they speak Spanish. I love it, I love it. This has been so unbelievably fun. Seriously, Jimena, I- uh, uh, Josh, I'm... can I say one thing before we go? <laughs> Absolutely, do it. It's because I think I didn't respond to your question on what can you see when people do it for 30 days. So what I what I was trying to say is that after doing all of that, what most commonly happens and what is the main problem that female come to me is they start ovulating and they get pregnant or they, ovulation is not only to get pregnant. You don't need to ovulate just because you wanna have babies. You need to ovulate because that's the way that women produce progesterone and women have healthy hormones that will sustain your brain your bones, your mood, your weight. Like you don't have to, like women think they have to count calories or they have to count macros, none of that. When your hormones are in their place and you are eating real food and all of that, you don't have to worry about your weight ever or your hormones or your fertility or anything because your body works in homeostasis and that means that your body does it all. You don't have to worry about it. So that's what happens when people start doing it is that they finally start recovering the homeostasis, which is that state where your body is, does what it's meant to do. I think that you really pleased some people and scared the shit out of others because you're just like, hey, well, most of the time they just get pregnant. You're like, what? <laughs> if they want to. If, if they, they want, want to. to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer. They start only if ovulating, you want. which is what we want. Okay. And that will bring you, that will bring you into your yin. Ovulation is the utmost uh, sign of femininity. There is nothing else that is more feminine than ovulation. No, nothing, nobody else can do it but women or, or, or people with, with, with ovaries. So if you want more yin, then ovulation is your kind of like, like oh, the holy grail. <laughs> yeah, and, and a great benchmark and metric to how healthy your hormones actually absolutely, are. Absolutely. If you can ovulate, means that your body thinks that you're healthy and safe enough to bring another life into this world. Yep. So don't take it for granted, but every month when I ovulate and I do it because I, I, I track my temperature and my fertility signs and it's very easy to do, every month when I ovulate, it's actually a party because it means that my body thinks, yes, girl, you're so healthy that you can, you can have I trust a you with a human. I, I, I trust you. I trust <laughs> you with another human. Exactly. exactly. Well, this 
This has seriously been so good. Sterling says, Jamina, thank you. This has been fascinating. I hope to see an English consultation come through in the new year. Prospero año. Oh, Sterling, consultations in English? Yes, I can do them in English whenever you want. Uh, I was talking about my programs that they are already made. They're made in Spanish, but consultations I can do in English, no problem. I love it. I love it. Jamina, you're a busy woman, but yet you took the time to hang with me and Elvis the rooster who has been remarkably quiet today. Uh, so yeah. He was listening. He was just listening. He's like, he's like, damn, all these hens, they're ovulating like so much. Uh, uh, so, um, so thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Seriously, this has been an absolute pleasure. Oh, Josh, it's been so amazing. I wish we could be here talking another two hours because there's so much to say about this. But I mean, I, I, I talk about it every day on Instagram, so. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll have to have you back on the show sometime yes. soon. You can tell us all about your adventures in the Red Sea. I think that's awesome. And we could do one in German. Oh, mm, soon. Okay. <laughs> Pressure's on. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, this has been so good. Thank you so much. Um, and, uh, and really, before we go, do you have any parting words for anybody? Well, I'm just like, I want to say to everyone that now we're finishing the year. It's like, guys, just know that health is in your hands. Health is not at your doctor's office. Health is not in the pharmacy. Health is not in the drugs you're taking. Health is in your hands because your body is the one who heals itself. And this is not me being woo-woo. This is actually how it works. Your body heals itself and can have itself alive and healthy when you give it what it needs. So how about, and we know a lot of, about this in 2020, how about we make 2021 the year where we're actually the masters of our health. So guys, get into it. It's not difficult and it's fascinating to do. So good. Seriously, guys, get in touch with Hamina. Check out her stuff. Go to Instagram. Follow her stuff. Seriously, thanks again for being here. This has been fantastic. Thank you, Josh. Un beso. Un beso. Un abrazo también. And, uh, and this is Hamina, Josh, and Elvis signing off another episode of Fire Builders Live, guys. Check us out another day. We stream live six days a week. Bring on amazing guests. Go see another episode. And you can support us at firebuilderslive.com. So check that out as well. Hamina, thanks again. See you later. Ciao. Bye.